Hey guys, Brian and PS4 Trophies streaming some Outlast 2. Gonna play insane difficulty. At least that's the goal. Let me know if you guys can hear me. We are live streaming here on YouTube. And uh, we're gonna play insane difficulty. Insane difficulty is the hardest difficulty, which is basically nightmare difficulty. However, it eliminates all checkpoints. So if you die, it's permadeath. You start back off in the beginning, which sucks. Now, a couple uh, points here as we go. Uh, this is a full uh, speed run on insane difficulty up until about the very end. Now I want to explain what happened. Uh, I played many times, practice each section, oh, 10, 12 times. And what happened is my game crashed three times, three consecutive times. Uh, once at about the one hour mark, once right before the two hour mark, once before or right after the two hour mark. So I pretty much rage quit and said I'd screw it and I'm never playing this game again because who wants to put themselves through that however a lot of people are asking me for a guide so what I did is I just edited in nightmare difficulty uh, I reloaded the checkpoint drained my battery to that uh, to where it was and then continued on didn't die or anything like that uh, interesting point there are no full insane speed runs on YouTube because everyone else did the same thing where they edited in nightmare difficulty so Anyways, I want to teach you how to survive in Outlast 2. And I think it's very important to kind of walk through not just where to go, but where not to go. I think it's very important to, to not only know the path that you should take, but why you should go, say, left around this tree instead of right around the tree. Because what's going to kill you is the things you can't see. And that's what I kind of want to walk you guys through. I want to teach you how to get through each of the segments. I can literally run through this entire game blindfolded and running backwards it's really easy for me at this point because i've done it so many times so it's i, I want to kind of relate it to you if it wasn't for the game crashing for me three times which sucked um which blocked me out of my trophy especially since i was so close to the end on the final one uh, i do want to do want to be very careful in, in my explanations i want you guys to understand what to do what to avoid there, there is some randomness with the the actual encounters with the enemies and most of it however is is pretty scripted and, and you can recreate most sections but for those sections that are a little wonky I'll be definitely sure to uh, to highlight that now I'm gonna have a full video of this without commentary it's going to be higher quality, higher resolution. It's going to be over at VidMe. I don't know if you guys are familiar with vid.me uh, slash PS4 trophies. Uh, I will have a video up on that channel later. It's kind of a, a new service, kind of like YouTube, where I'm uploading guides just in case because the whole advertising debacle over here on YouTube, I'm kind of putting my eggs in other baskets. So I will have a link in the description to that video I don't think it's available just yet but uh, because we are streaming this quality isn't quite a hundred percent to where I would normally do a guide but I wanted to kind of do this as a live stream just because it gives me the opportunity to talk well for two and a half hours it's kind of lonely talking to yourself in a microphone now I have kind of added a little brightness uh, and adjusted the contrast as well in this picture to help compensate but the game is dark. There's no two buts about it. Nothing you can do. Uh, we're going to play in the dark most of this game, which is why hopefully me being able to talk you through it will make it a little bit easier. Uh, there's a lot of sections where we have to avoid using our camera. In fact, we're going to avoid using our cameras right up to the, uh, the uh, library. Uh, the library sequence where you got to go through the maze, that's where we're going to really start burning a lot of our camera battery there and then later in the mines when we get to the mines we ideally want to have half a battery left unfortunately we're going to lose a quarter of our battery once we meet nick and his little fire uh, arrow throwing friend they'll take about half of, uh, a quarter of your battery away from you so you really can't use any battery you get the profit trophy for completing the game on insane difficulty. You get the Messiah trophy for completing the game on insane difficulty without reloading your battery. So we're not reloading our battery, which is a little tricky, a little uh, difficult. The in uh, intro of this game, really the first half an hour, I find exceptionally boring, especially once you've played through this 
over a dozen times. I've, like I said, I've practiced each section at least a dozen times. I've attempted three insane runs when I literally know everywhere to go. Unfortunately, game crashing on me uh, kind of just made me rage quit. I wasn't going to make this video, but so many people have been asking me on Twitter, which, by the way, follow me at PS4 underscore trophies. But a lot of people have been asking for it, so I kind of cheated a little bit. I'm going to contact uh, Red Barrels, see what's going on with the crashing. As far as I can tell, there's no one's really reported the problem. But anyway, let's get into the game here. I'm picking up a bandage here to the left of the helicopter crash. Now we have a dark area. We're heading towards this campfire. There's a cliff to your left, so be careful. I know it's dark, but hopefully you guys have turned up your gamma on your in the game. Turned up the brightness on your monitor, uh, brightness and contrast. Turn off the lights in the room. That'll help you see as well. But more than anything, you have to practice. Each section, you have to be able to just do it. Not think about it, just do it. So... It's uh, easier said than done, of course. Uh, so, we're just going to sprint here. Now, you'll see, you get exhausted. Now, there's certain points in this game where we're going to stop, recover our uh, stamina up before we move on. Really quick, right here, make sure this guy runs away. He can kill you if you sprint up to him, which sucks. So, we're going inside the building here, going outside, going through the fence here on the left-hand side, and then we have another dark passageway. Do not use your camera. I, I, I'm going to say it several times throughout this entire uh, this entire run. It's dark. On your screen, when you're playing at home, again, as long as you've adjusted your settings, uh, you'll be able to see a, a lot better than you're going to be able to see in this video. But because we can't change battery, we're going to be in the dark most of the time. Again, over at vid.me slash PS4 trophies, I will upload a full uh, play. This exact footage as a matter of fact just without my commentary this is all pre-recorded footage i can't do this and talk at the same time all right so now here is where we're going to meet marta for the first time so right here recharge your stamina you have to make sure you have full stamina that you're not exhausted when you see her she's going to come around this corner and i see it's kind of a little blurry here on, on on my stream here i don't know if it is on your end as well and then we're going to train her around the building and continue onwards and crawl under here. Now, the thing about uh, Marta is that's how we're going to deal with her throughout the entire game. There's going to be several cases where we're going to do that exact uh, maneuver where we make her come up a certain path and then we just kind of run around her. So now we're going to climb up here into the attic. And there's really nothing's going to kill us at, at the moment. We are going to drop down. We are going to enter a building. And that is where the game is going to give us the little tutorial about uh, using the microphone on the camera. Do not use the microphone. We're not using the microphone or the night vision. The microphone will drain your battery. Not quite as fast as the night vision will. So again, I apologize. This is going to be a, a dark run. But here we go, here's where we get the tutorial. So I'm gonna just activate it real quick and then close it. When we open this door, there's a guy right to the right. So we're gonna go forward a few steps and then turn. Cause there's one guy there and there's another guy around the corner here. So when you go around the corner of that house, kinda take it a little wide. And there's only those two enemies you're gonna have to worry about. So when you jump out that, uh, go out that house, uh, you have a, a, a guy right to the right of you as you exit it. And then you'll have that guy around the corner of the house. So remember, this is pre-recorded footage. My commentary is live, but the footage here is pre-recorded. So I know we're going to get to the end in about two and a half hours, by the way. All right, so we have nothing going on for a little bit. Uh, again, the, the, the pacing in this, is, especially in the beginning, is a little slow. There's a lot of walking, a lot of talking, a lot of conversation, which is not very fun. But we're going to uh, we're going to get through this here. Uh, I see a bunch of people here in the chat. Is live gameplay? The gameplay is not live. The commentary is live. So I just want to full disclosure once again. Uh, my game crashed on three consecutive runs. 
on my insane run here uh, at the one hour mark right before the two hour mark and right after the two hour mark so instead of just deleting the game which i really really wanted to do i decided to just edit in a nightmare at the kind of for the, the final maybe 20 30 percent of this video uh, i drained the battery i nothing about it. i don't gain any advantage at all by doing that but so many people have asked me to to walk them through teach them how to to get to the end of this game and there's a lot of tricky parts in this game definitely i don't know if it's any harder than outlast one however the there it's longer it's two and a half times longer uh, or at least twice as long and there's more opportunities for for death so I will not even attempt this uh, on Insane again until I figure out why my PlayStation's crashing. Uh, but for the record, no no other person has uploaded a Insane difficulty speedrun or anything from start to finish. Everyone has edited in uh, Nightmare difficulty uh, towards the end. So we're just, again, nothing's going to happen here. We're just walking, walking and talking. There's a lot of things here. Again, yes, the gamma settings on your uh, in the game and menu will help if you uh, increase that to max. Uh, increasing your brightness, in fact, increasing your brightness on your monitor actually might even help the stream. But increasing brightness, contrast, do everything you can. But most, a lot of areas are just going to be completely pitch black. So because we're doing this without reloading our, our battery, we have to just know the path. You're not going to be able to watch this video and know the path. And for some reason, they just automatically turn on your camera there. So quickly turn it off. We're also, uh, for the record, not going to use any barrels or closets. I don't think. I'm pretty sure we don't use any barrels and closets. There's a trophy for that as well. It's actually pretty easy to get that one. That's not too difficult. So again, we're walking and talking. This whole pregnancy talk, and then we're gonna have a little cutscene. Again, this first half an hour is kind of boring, I guess. Not boring, definitely interesting. But when you play through this game, as often and as many times as I've done it, to the point where I literally can play this blindfolded, it's it gets very tedious. I wish there was kind of some way to then just skip. From one section to the next without having to deal with these little walking and talking. So yes, Daniel in chat asked if somebody specific edited towards the end. The answer is yes. In fact, you'll see that he uh, they zoomed in so you don't see the, the saving icon on the bottom left. So the picture zoomed in and the camera battery is actually a little too high uh, when they get to the library. It's impossible for it to be that high unless you uh, reloaded a chapter. Someone else here, and uh, we're going to have kind of a little chat here since we have a, a little moment, but someone has <laughs> how many hours I play video games. This is my job. This is my full-time job. My full-time job is to play video games, to earn trophies. I am blessed. It's awesome. It's also not as easy and as fun as you guys would probably think it is. So again, uh, Insane Difficulty and Nightmare Difficulty are identical. Insane Difficulty just has permadeath. There's no checkpoints. You die, you start all the way back at the beginning, and then you have to deal with all these little cutscenes off here in the beginning, which admittingly sucks. So yes, I'm insane. You can't die. Uh, this speed run, I, I think, took about two and a half hours. I think it was the total total time on this. So right, we're about to finally get up. Once you get up, you're going to be staggered. You're going to be hazy. Uh, we're just going to continue down the path. Just look for the light in the uh, in the distance. You'll be able to find your way. Uh, and then we're going to reach a tiny little uh, village with some water and some bridges. It's 
pretty easy. Uh, we're just going to stay along the left side and then sprint all the way across oh, into Man. another house. And we are going to have our second school sequence. The school sequence is uh, my favorite parts of the game, by the way. Uh, there is one towards the end that is absolutely a bitch on uh, insane or nightmare difficulty. So we have a little ways before we, we get to that. So here's the little village. So we're just going to crawl offshore here to the left hand side again it's dark we got to save our battery guys can't use your battery do not use it until you get to the library and here we go we're just sprinting into this building our first little school sequence once you enter it you'll see the door just in front of you and to the right so before it gets dark mentally look at the path here and then you'll find the door then we're going to grab the little piece of paper here on the desk, the photo, put it down, and this door just magically appears. Turn right. Once we go outside, we just head straight back into the right, and you'll find the exit out of the first, uh, well, second school part here. Yeah, well, you're going to first use a lot of the battery uh, when you get to the library maze. You have to, I mean, unless you really, really, really know exactly how many steps you have to take and turn. It, it would be almost impossible to do without using the battery. Uh, I am going to use it, flash it. Um, we have to flash it in one of the schools a uh, bit to get a the, the demon to kind of pop out. You kind of run up and down a hallway a, a few times. So we're going to flash it a little bit there. And I will flash it uh, one other time for just a moment as well. For the most part, I am trying to get to the school library, and here's Ethan, another whole little walkie-talkie part. Uh, we're trying to get to the, ultimately the goal is to get to the mines with half a battery. And Nick and his little fire arrow friend are going to take a quarter of your battery. You're, so you lose a quarter of your battery, which sucks. So not only are you recharging, you don't even get the full battery. Seen too much to keep the faith. But you're not All right, so yeah, know. this is um, the, the, the boring part here. So let's get, let's hop in, in the chat. And, and while I do that, make sure you guys follow me on Twitter at PS4 underscore trophies. Uh, you can uh, watch a ad-free full playthrough of this, a higher quality version of this, over at vid.me slash PS4 trophies. I don't think the video is currently live. It's been uploading for hours now. That's another streaming service where I will be posting videos from time to time. Not as a replacement to YouTube, guys. Don't worry. Uh, it's just advertising on YouTube is just terrible. It's, you know, almost 50% less than what we were making, you know, a couple months ago. And it's hit me and every other creator out there. Which is why I'm doing uh, other things now, doing more live streaming. Streaming on here on YouTube, streaming on, I'll be streaming on you Twitch as well. It's why we came here. Is she all right? Eric in chat wants to know what trophies do I still need for plat? I gotta just do the speed run here. But my game has crashed three consecutive times really deep into this. And, and I've done this so many times. I have every part memorized. There's a couple parts you gotta improvise a little bit and we'll get to that. But for me, the game is simple at this point. Because I practice, it, like anything, even with the first game, you had to practice. There's just no no way around it. All right, so now we're gonna go to sleep. There's some bandages over here. Make sure you grab those. Those are important to grab. Uh, there was one at the helicopter, the crash helicopter just to the left of it, and then there was that one there. Now, as far as the uh, hardest parts of this game, and here's the part where Mar uh, Marta comes up and uh, has a little not-so-friendly chat with Ethan. Uh, some of the hardest parts is on the uh, during Chapter 1, during the uh, sequence called the Chapel, you will meet Marta, and you have to push a cart. That part is a little tricky because you will have to improvise a little bit. There's no way I can just tell you do this to do that and you will win. It's just there, there's some 
randomness involved there. Her pathing is always a little random. I kind of, I, I can complete it 100% of the time now. I've done it like 10 times in a row, uh, but it's not always the same. I'll help you guys out when, which, of course, once we get there. Uh, then once you get to the chapel, there's the next section where you have to sprint and uh, op open a door. And if you're not careful, you'll, you'll die really easily. The um, second chapter with the, when you're in the woods and you got uh, Nick and his little, again, the, his fire arrow buddy on his shoulders. That whole chapter is probably the hardest chapter in the game. And then after that, it's really the mines uh, can prove to be quite troublesome. Uh, there's a, a couple sections where you have virtually no room for error. And again, we're going to save our battery until we get to the mines. All right, so we're uh, we're getting close here. We can finally climb out of this uh, this darn little cellar. Take your penance. God loves you. God loves you. So again, this is about two and a half hours. It is about seventy percent on insane difficulty. Final thirty percent. I had to switch to uh, nightmare because. My game crashed three consecutive times, but as I mentioned, no one has uploaded a full insane walkthrough. Everyone's kind of cheated and put nightmare. It's really easy to video edit stuff and, and fool everybody. I did it not because I couldn't do it, but because my game crashed. I honestly, I almost gave up on this game completely. I wasn't even going to make this video. So many people have been asking, you know, over a million views between my other outlast uh, speedrun guides. And, you know, I knew a lot of people were expecting me to do this, but I almost just deleted the game. I was raged so bad. So I decided to just kind of cheat it a little bit at the end. Of course, Nightmare Difficulty is insane difficulty, uh, just with checkpoints. Of course, I'm not going to use checkpoints. All right, so you see I'm exhausted. You've got the screen flashing. You have to be very careful about when you sprint and when you don't sprint. you got to make sure when you reach certain sections that you have full stamina so you don't get exhausted halfway through a chase. I know a lot of chases in this game. In fact, we're going to come up here to the hole in the fence in the cornfield, our first cornfield, and stop right here, recharge our stamina, crawl under the fence. Now, I'm going through the, uh, the forest or the uh, cornfield here. I don't know why I'm doing this. The best way to do this section is to just sprint down the main path and take the first right down the next path and jump over the uh, the, uh, the 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 ramp, right, which is right here. So that, don't ask me why I, I, I uh, did it here on this one. That's the way I did it here. Again, the easiest way is just to recharge your stamina. Sprint down the center of the path and then turn right and sprint right up the ramp. No one's going to hit you, don't worry. Now right here, we need to immediately, once we get inside the barn, crawl under here and then I'm going to turn towards the door. The door in which we just came in. So at this point, I'm just going to freeze, not do anything. There are two guys in this barn. Uh, this one guy is going to path from our right to in front of us to our uh, and then come around the vehicle around the left hand side and then one's going to path back and he's either going to go through the front and this is where you can see the random pathing he can either go through the front door that we just entered or he'll go through a second door now again i mentioned there was a second guy in here you don't we don't have to worry about him we're just going to worry about this guy here and it looks like he's gonna go out the front. He might come back around in front of us and then he go around a uh, another back door. But at that point, I'm just going to crouch over here and then get up and interact with this. There's some glass on the ground over there next to that vehicle, so avoid that. I don't know if stepping on it's gonna do anything. All right, so once we're up here, crawl through this opening here and then we're gonna yank on this chain I think just twice Fuck. 
All right, so be careful. If you fall off this little uh, this beam here, it, you're done for. Start over at the very beginning of the game. So take your time getting on it. But once you get on it, just keep moving forward, and you'll get pushed down. Which sucks. Alright, so once we get up, we're going to come back down this pathway here. We're going to get another blast from that microwave tower. The microwave tower, which is owned by the Murkoff Corporation, which is conducting experiments, which is causing all these hallucinations. I don't know how much of the story you guys got. A lot of people play through this game and have don't seem to have much clue on what's going on. Uh, most of the people that just have no idea what the ending is and, and are all confused, but... I mean, there's still people think that there actually was a baby, and there was no baby, by the way. All right, so here comes a cave system, which admittingly sucks. We're going to have to go in this cave. Once we, We're going to have to jump over there first, and then just to the left of that uh, torch over there, we're going to climb up into a cave. Now, what we're going to do is go into the cave. We're staying dark. No camera use, guys. Do not use your camera. We're going to go in here, and there's a little bend to the left. And at a certain point, I'm going to crawl. And I think I kind of move straight forward a little bit again to the left. Do not use your camera. You have as long as it takes, as long as you need to get through this part. No enemies are going to chase you. No one's going to kill you. You can't die. So do not use your battery. Do not put, pop open your night vision to kind of get your orientation. Again, this is where playing through things several times will help you understand no. the path. Some kind of so I cannot stress it enough. You cannot jump. use your battery. Just don't do it. And then jump. By the way, I've fell, fallen there twice. All right, so now here's another thing where it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty easy path, but there's these branches that are kind of poking out from the sides and that'll kind of get you stuck so when it gets dark it's i'm going to try to move forward i'm not moving my right stick i'm moving my left stick kind of left and right to kind of get my navigation there when you see no no pop up on your screen you'll hear it i'm going to turn a quarter to the right and hopefully see this opening all right so next up on our uh, on this uh, uh run of ours is the village we're gonna enter a house from the basement that is really dark it is not this dark when you play uh play the game and uh, at home guys i promise you increase your gamma uh, do all that it's just because this is a pre-recorded video we're streaming there's a lot of things against it again i'll have a higher quality version without any commentary at vid.me slash ps4 trophies link in the description all right so in this house we're going to go up to this, uh, from the basement up to the first floor. It's completely dark. you got to find the stairs. They'll be right above you, so we've got to go on the opposite side of the house to find them. Do not use your battery, but look up here. You'll see these lights, kind of a, a squared pattern there. That's where you know where the, the stairs are. So just try to figure out the thing in the dark. Take as long as you need, but you can tell I've played the game a few, <laughs> a few times to, to be able to just kind of to run to where I need to go in the dark. Like I mentioned, I can do this blindfolded at this point. All right, so here's uh, another tricky part. Some people have asked me about this. We're going to run up here, and then we're going to run halfway to our destination in the generator. And then I'm going to stop and recharge my stamina so I don't get exhausted because we're going to sprint up this little pathway that kind of uh, that goes up here. And we have to sprint past this house. You see it right in front of us. A guy's coming out of there. So if you're exhausted while you're running up that hill, you'll get caught. So make sure you recharge your stamina before you sprint past that house. Next up, guy's walking down the stairs. He's coming around. He's going to go to the right side. When he's coming to the right, we're just going to crawl up to the left and then run up the stairs. We're going straight to the generator, and we're going to uh, pull the uh, cord three times to start it up. Of course, there's a jump scare here. Spoilers. This is uh, how uh, teaching you how to be insane, not trying to scare the heck out of you. But when you turn around, don't immediately run out. She'll actually kill you. She won't kill you if you just let her walk to her where she's trying to go. So 
So again, make sure you guys are managing your stamina. Make sure you're not exhausted where you need to be running. And one of those points is going to be right down over here. We're going to meet Marta. So I'm going to stop at the top of the hill here, recharge my stamina, and then I'm going to start walking down this hill. And when she comes out, you'll see her uh, out in the distance. She'll come from the right, and then she'll see you and start coming up the path here. When she starts coming up the path, I'm going to kind of slowly crop, uh, go backwards and then start sprinting up and then around and then down these stairs. You can't do this too early. If you do it too early, she'll actually come around up the stairs on the opposite side and uh, catch you on your way down. So make sure you kind of lure her up the stairs, uh, up your path before you make a break around. When you get into that elevator, spam the uh, square button as you're entering it. In fact, we're going to use that strategy for several different parts where we're approaching doors. We're just going to keep spamming it as we get to it. All right, so once you get up, we're just going to go to the well. You guys know this. Hop in the well, and we're going back to school. That's a great movie, by the way, Back to School, Rotten Dangerfield. All right, so here it's dark. We're in the vent system. You gotta turn right before the fan. Continue straight until you see, uh, hear some dialogue. If you got subtitles on, you'll see it. it says, Please, Blake. At that point, you're gonna turn a quarter turn to the left. You're gonna hear some more racket. When you do, we're gonna make a left turn here and then drop down into the school. Yes, this is pre-recorded gameplay. I can't do this and talk at the same time. Please, please. All right, so in the school, we're gonna go, we have to turn left, and it's a dark hallway, and a locker's gonna open up, and there'll be a music box. So we're gonna go and interact with this music box. Crank it. I was really prepared for a huge jump scare my first time here. It didn't happen, <laughs> which is actually even more scary than I think something happening. All right, so now we're gonna turn to the right, turn off your camera, it turns on automatically. Run back to where we just came from, here's that first room, and then turn back around. Jessica's gonna go run into a classroom here to the right side, we're gonna follow her. And now this is where the chase begins. This is where things can start getting very dangerous for you. We're heading to the chapel, that is the, name of it, uh, this sequence in, this, uh, in the first chapter. And this is where replaying this section over and over again is going to pay off. You cannot beat this on insane difficulty without practicing each chapter numerous times. So just be forewarned, practice. When you come into this room, do not go through this door right in front of me. Just to the left, now it's behind me. Do not go through that other door. If you try going through that door, You'll stop, you'll you'll shake on the door, the guy behind you will come up, he'll kill you, you're starting back off at the very beginning of the game. Now you're crawling under the house, I'm going to do a bit of this here, and there's a fork in the path, of course there's a, there's a, a monster, an enemy, a heretic, or whatever you want to call him, coming from the left side, so the game will actually kind of turn you to the right. So now we're going to sprint up into the next house. And then of course to the left. Now we have a small little break in the action, um, but not very long. We're going to go to the opposite side of this area and have to crawl underneath the bed. So this second to last bunk, crawl under it, wait here for this guy to come busting through the door. Let him pass. Now I'm going to keep crawling. Now kind of get up. I'm still crouching. Now I'm going to kind of go to the stairs and lure the guy down below. Once you hear the the music and the noise, run back up the stairs, climb over that railing and drop behind him. Go around to this door here, spamming square as I'm getting close to it, spamming it to close it, and then hitting square to lock it. Immediately come to the opposite side. We need to push this. As soon as you hear them busting through that door, stop pushing, turn to your left, and then you're safe at this point. Now just try to navigate this dark hallway without using your, your camera battery. Do not, again, 
use your uh, night vision. Just suck it up, deal with the dark. Nothing is going to kill you in that hallway, I promise you. I realize this, this does does kind of suck for y'all, but just because it's so dark and we're not using any batteries. Uh, so we got a moment here, so I want to just say uh, hello to Blood of Blackula, one of our sponsors. And I do appreciate that. You guys can sponsor the channel. Uh, I think it's $3.99 a month or something, and you get the, a gold trophy next to your name in chat. Uh, make sure you also hit the like button. Let's get uh, let's giddy up on that. And uh, if you haven't already, of course, subscribe. All right, so this house, we're going to go up these stairs. This this floor here, take your time. Nothing's going to kill you. But the next uh, room you go into, you're going to have chase. You have to know where exactly where you're going. So we're circling that room counterclockwise to find the stairs going up. And then we're navigating ourselves out here. Again, not too difficult once you've done that a few times. Now we're going to go crawl under another house. And again, I just want to say hello, chat. Uh, or if you're watching this on the archived uh, YouTube on the channel, uh, thank you for watching. I wish I had time to chat with you all, but alas, I do not. All right, so crawling through this house, you kind of make a little left turn there, and then you straighten out, and then you got to kind of make a right turn. The game is going to kind of point you in the right direction. You can just kind of get caught up on something if you're not careful, and a pitchfork will just kind of go through your head. So make sure you're you're constantly moving and you're not trying to fight against the direction in which you're supposed to go. Now once you climb up, uh, get out of here, we're jumping into this building here. We have to hit the square button to, to smash through the floor. Once, twice, and three times. As long as when you jump inside of here, you don't turn. When you drop to the ground, you have to make sure you crawl. You only have to crawl uh, straight forward. If you kind of turn when you're in there, then you gotta find the, find the exit path and you might get hit. You don't want to get hit. If you are bleeding, by the way, and it's very important, if you're bleeding, make sure you use bandages. You must use the bandage because you can fall and take fall damage and that'll kill you where it ordinarily wouldn't. So now we're in the school. We're going to just go upstairs here. And, you know, I've half the time I, I become, I bleed on this jump and then half the time I don't I'm not entirely sure in that case I, I started bleeding so I'm gonna have to use a bandage I really wish I can uh, iron out exactly what how to not sustain the, the bleeding damage but I haven't been able to do that my apologies uh, if you've taken damage make sure you use your, uh, your bandages now we found a couple bandages previously so we have enough if you guys are just joining, make sure you guys, uh, from the beginning, you go ahead and do that. Uh, uh, watch from the beginning. It should be able to re uh, rewind or watch it on the archive footage later. Now, here's uh, the first real, real tricky part. First, I'm going to grab a bandage here because I used one. I need it. We're going to push this cart. Here, we're going to deal with Marta. We're going to push the cart. Marta's going to block the path. What I'm going to do is then sprint around counterclockwise around this area. And then come back to the cart, and then she'll bust through the fence, and she'll create a new opening. If you've done this, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's also a little hole in the fence there to our left. We're skipping that for now. Instead, she blocked the cart path. I'm sprinting around counterclockwise around this area. It's counterclockwise. Yes, counterclockwise. <laughs> then we have to go to where the little hole in the fence is, and we're going to crawl through and approach the cart. You may not be able to have time to interact with that. If that's the case, don't worry about it. She busted the fence. I'm going through the little hole now. Now, what I'm going to try to do is to get her to walk around the same circle that I just did. I'm just going to try to get her to walk that way. So she's going to come back towards me, and then I have to go through this fence. She's very quick. you got to be very careful here. She's, now she's going to go back to the other side. Make sure she does completely go outside there. She might actually come back behind the fence here. But we're going to try to get her to come out. I'm leaning. I'm crouched behind the fence, but I'm leaning with the R2 button. And as she st starts walking that way, I'm going to come back and push the cart. Sometimes you can actually push this all the way up to the gate. Most of the time you cannot, and that's going to be the case here. I'm going to hear her. As soon as you hear her, stop pushing. She's going to be coming from around the back corner. So now we're going to go clockwise. 
around this area. Now I found this strategy works most of the time for me. You may have to improvise because her pathing can be somewhat random here. I wish it, it wasn't the case, but this strategy I'm using here often works for me nine out of 10 times. But again, be prepared to improvise. At this point now I can jump up. She's gonna grab my leg here. Sometimes you can actually hop over this before she gets to you. So there you go. That's how I do that part. Again, be prepared to improvise a little bit there. Uh, basically using a combination of what I just did to help you uh, get through that part. So now we're going to go into the chapel. There's a pretty lengthy uh, little cutscene here. And while it plays on, I am going to go grab a cup of coffee. First, let's go talk to him. Then we're going to go hide in the confessional. I'm going to grab a cup of coffee. I'll be back in about oh, maybe a minute. And we need to talk about the next part, guys, because it can kill you. I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't prepared. I was shocked because your margin of error is nothing. But it is easy. I'll tell you how to do it in just a moment. All right, guys. Oh, let me tell you, I drink a lot of coffee. It's, I think it's becoming an issue. So, this is still going on. Now, notice that I don't have my camera out, but if you note, and it's going to be kind of tricky to see, but there's a white dot in the center, center of the screen. That's kind of your crosshairs. That's always in the center, wherever you're facing. That is the, and I do enjoy the conversation you all are having in chat about the, the storyline and, and ending and everything. So, that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, you see the little white dot. Once this sequence ends, we need to, well, walk out of this confessional, and then uh, I'm going to start sprinting outside, and then you're going to get to a building where you need to slide open a door, just like we did in the barn after the first cornfield. You're going to have to slide open the, the door. If you don't slide it open enough, the guy behind you who's chasing after you is going to stab you in the back, and you're going to die. If you open it too far... That means you've wasted too much time opening it. The guy that's chasing behind you is going to come up behind you and stab you in the back. So you've got to open it just to the right amount that you can get through, but not too much so that you've spent too long opening it. So if you look at the little white dot, once you, as you're in the sliding the op door open animation, look at the white dot. And as it crosses... As it intersects with the center of the handle of the door that we're sliding open. So you're going to see the white dot move from the left side. And it's going to path over towards the right. And as it reaches the, the center of the door handle, that is when you want to let go of the door and squeeze through that opening. Even if you did it fast and quick enough, you might hear the swiping of the enemy behind you. That's how little uh, room for error that you have. So we're going to go run off and do this in just a second. And then, of course, after we go through there, we need to just make our way through the building, climb up the water tower, jump across to safety. And then we're going to reach our next cornfield. So anyway, they're, they're gone. Now that I know it's safe, I'm going to kind of just walk here halfway. I'm going to start sprinting to the door. The chase is on, guys. 
Just giddy up, get on your high horse, sprint as fast as you can. You're not going to become exhausted, thankfully, but it's like right at the limits, right where you would be. Here's where the door is. As soon I'm getting ready to hit that square button. The white dot's going to cross over the, the, the middle of the handle. I stop, squeeze through. So close. And then quickly make our way out the back door. you got to kind of weave in and out around there. They're still chasing you, so keep going, guys. And now we have a jump, and this freaking sucks, because if you miss a jump in this game, you're starting back over. So we're going to go run around, jump to safety. Please don't miss that jump, and then hop over here. You're now safe for just a moment. We're going to go into the next building here. you got the weird, crazy lady and the babies. And then we're going to go through the, the next window. There may be bandages, by the way, in the sink over here to the right. Uh, as soon as I exit out this window, I'm immediately going to the left side. I'm going to stay. I'm not sprinting. Jump in, and I'm going to move to the left side. I'm going to move alongside this cornfield along the left fence. In theory, nothing should see me. And in theory, when I get to the edge of the corn, there should not be a guy there. Nine times out of ten, there's nobody there, and I'm going to just quietly crouch into the next building. When you get to the end of the cornfield, just don't sprint out. Just look real carefully. See if there's someone standing there. If there's someone standing there, you're going to have to improvise a little bit. You're going to have to want to go exit the cornfield from further to our right. Try to sneak into the building. Uh, once you get into the building, close, lock the door. Quickly grab the, the, the crank. There's nobody here. That's where the guy would be standing. So I'm clear. I'm safe. Uh, and then if there is somebody there, you're going to have to improvise again. Go and grab the crank. You're going to have to... You, you're going to have to improvise. You might have to hide behind barrels. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you. But we're going to come in here, lock the door. There's no... Nothing can kill me at this point. I'm safe, but I'm going to go inside the room, grab the handle here. Go outside. And go up the stairs. Again, it's... It's a little dark. It's going to be a lot clearer in your game. Again, over at uh, VidMe, I do have, I uploaded a video, vid.me slash PS4 trophies. It might not be active yet, but there'll be a link in the description if you're watching this on the archived uh, the on YouTube later on, not during the live stream. Okay, so we're good. Crawl down here. This next bit is actually pretty easy. This is kind of where we go through the... Uh, the cow slaughtering grounds. So pretty easy, but exit the building to the left because now you're being chased, by the way. I suppose I should mention that. Now you're safe, at least for the moment. We're going to see Marta in just a second. She's going to come. This is the path we got to get to the cow slaughter. So what I'm going to do is just get far enough to trigger her pathing. Get far enough. Hang on here. There we go. Now I'm just going to get to the edge of the barn here, the corner. And I'm just going to lie on the ground, go prone. And it might take a minute. But as long as you're lying here, she's not going to bother you. So the idea, now I played a lot of these sections over and over and over and over again. Many different strategies. I've died many different ways. Sometimes intentionally, just this test. Uh, the, what, you know, I wanted to make sure I tell you guys exactly what can kill you. I think that's more important than how not to die is knowing what can possibly kill you. But you saw she just kind of walked over to the left. So at this point, as long as you get behind her, you can sprint. It's fine. As long as you get through this little hole in the fence, you're clear. So simple. We're just going to go in here. Find a crank, we're gonna have to pull on it three times. Nothing is going to kill you between here and heading back to where we need to take the hook to. So let's take a look at chat here. A lot of discussion about which Outlast is better. I think Outlast Whistleblower DLC, the first game's DLC was the best. Followed by the first Outlast, followed by Outlast 2. Now, I like this game um, a lot. I fully understand the story and everything. Uh, nothing's unclear to me. A lot of people are confused. I've done a lot of studying. I played this game so many times. Read all the collectibles. On my channel, I have all the 
the school recordings, you know how they're blank recordings when you're recording them. Uh, if you play them back backwards, there's actually a hidden message. I have a video on my channel of all of those, if you're just curious. Anyway, so now that we're back out to the, the area, that's where we are hiding on the ground prone. Sprint around here. She's coming out of that barn. Quickly get in here. As you're approaching this thing where you got attached a hook, spam the square button. Why not? Just keep spamming it. Turn around, sprint to the chain, which is five feet behind you. As you're sprinting towards it, spam the square button again. Pull twice, and then quickly sprint down here. She'll grab you. Nothing you can do about that. And thank you for subscribing. I noticed there's a bunch of new subscribers. I do appreciate that. I really wish I could stop and, and break. Maybe I should do this live stream, just a casual kind of thing one time, but uh, so we can talk. But... I do appreciate all of you guys. If you guys are watching this on YouTube after the stream, thank you for getting this far into the stream. All right, so now we're going to jump into the school once again. The little hangman thing right in front of you. That's where you get one of your recordings with your camcorder. Again, we're not using our camcorder at all here. Going down the left door, uh, we're going to go find a classroom here to the left-hand side. Grab the transparency. I think that's what those are called, right? And then go back out to the hangman room and go through the door that would have been on the right. Find a classroom here on the right hand side. This is where we got to take our little transparency, put it on this little projector here. And move this over. I personally think the school bits were my favorite parts of the, of the game. I know some people didn't like them. I was a big fan of them. I like. I like this environment. I, I felt it was just more scary in general. Sounds about right. But there is some school bits later on that are real hard on this difficulty. All right, so now we're heading back to the center again. And there's now a door here to the right we can open. All right, here's a, where our first part where we have to use the camcorder's night vision. Um, I don't think it was on this video again because I had to play this through three times. There's a couple... I think I did a... a a couple different clips kind of put together so I'm not entirely sure which one of this is but how you can do this without using is using as little uh, night vision as possible is run back and forth the third time you get to this exit sign uh, as you're approaching it you flash on the night vision and then you should uh, spot the demon because that's what's going on here we got to trigger the demon the demon will only come out I don't know if it's really a demon I guess it's kind of a monster or father Ludermich or louder milch that's technically who it is there you go that only happened with the night vision on so you don't you don't want to just keep it on the entire time you just kind of want to flash it in fact oh and now we have to go in here and move the cart you guys know that already uh in fact the sequence when we get to the library as i mentioned we're trying not to use our battery until we get to the library we're trying to get half a battery uh, by the time we get to the mines now in the library, we're in the maze section where you do have to use it, I'm gonna flicker on and off the night vision. I'm not even gonna keep it on the whole time. That's how we're gonna save ba battery, but we'll worry about that when we get there. All right, so you're gonna eventually, as you're climbing out, I think you have to go straight a little bit in the left, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the uh, the monster's going to grab you. Your night vision's gonna turn on automatically, so the second it turns on, immediately turn it off. Okay, so we're on chapter two officially now. And this chapter sucks. This is probably the hardest chapter in the game. Uh, this is the chapter with Nick, the big dude with the little kid on his back firing arrows at you. Uh, th this sucks. I'm not going to lie. And make sure, by the way, you're balancing across here that you don't fall. Because that would be a terrible way to, to end your insane run it's not quite as terrible as getting about two hours and ten minutes into with the speed run close to the end of the game and having the game crash on you like it did for me i am so pissed so pissed that the game crashed blue screen blue air screen came out and the application closed and i had to start all over that's why i am doing the first half of this is the insane and the second half i tacked in the the um Nightmare difficulty, which, by the way, is how everyone else on YouTube has done it. And there is no start-to-finish insane run on YouTube. 
I really, really wanted it to, to, to do the first start to finish. But the game crashed three times on me towards the end. And I, I gave up. I really gave up. I think I spent, uh, I took a couple days off and people on Twitter were asking me if I was going to do a, a guide because I did it, of course, with the first two games. And, and well, thanks to you guys. I mean, this is really, a, a, I guess, a fan requested video. I was okay just not doing it. I was that ticked off. And I will definitely be in touch with the Red Barrels. Alright, so you just got your glimpse, by the way, of Nick and his little pal. Who I am not a big fan of. I do not like them. Alright, so we've hit the ground. We're going to pick up our battery, or our camcorder, rather. Now, again, it's going to automatically have the night vision on, so I'm going to make sure I turn it off. Uh, just keep running through the dark. Again, if you turned up your gamma in your settings in your game, if you've increased the brightness of your monitor, increased the contrast, uh, you'll be able to actually kind of see here in a dark room. <laughs> There's a lot of things. you got to do this, this, and this in order to see. It sucks, but... Uh, and of course, as I mentioned several times, you have to um, replay, study the chapters, replay them over and over, get very familiar, memorize the paths. It's just what you got to do. Uh, again, I see a, a couple times popped up in chat here. This is a live stream. My commentary is live. The actual video is pre-recorded. All right, so we're in the dark. We're climbing over logs. We're crawling in logs. And eventually you're going to get out here. Go up this path, and we're going to drop down. Now, to save battery life, what you do is, as soon as you drop down, because we're, not again, not going to use our night vision, go to the very end of this path. You'll see a note on the ground. As soon as you pass it, you'll hit the end. Crouch, or not crouch, go prone, and then turn right. And you'll find this opening here. And it's not as easy just turning up your brightness, by the way. Because if there's nothing there to see, if the game is actually black and not just de uh, dark shadows. Oh, by the way, you're going to get caught here. And then we're going to go to... That guy's just going to kind of be no uh, worries to us. But we're going to hit this campfire here. Uh, I'm going to stay kind of on the left side. I don't, don't want the dude in the tent here to grab my ankles. He'll do that. And we're, look for some words on the screen there. Someone's running down. He's got a knife. He's coming after us. Oh, my God. So what I'm going to do is let him get close enough and then try to sprint around him. So you may have to kind of go to the left or the right, depending which way he's coming. So you're going to have to improvise just a little bit there. But then continue on the path. So, again, same thing we do with uh, Marta, where we just kind of lure her towards us and then train her around and pass her. That's kind of how you got to do it there. All right, so here you go. Bam. All right, this part, very tricky, by the way. Uh, don't get caught in the fire. You get caught in the fire, you'll lose half your health. You'll be bleeding. You don't want to do that. Now, as we move forward, we're going to meet Nick here again. We're going to see him. He's going to come, and I'm going to sprint all the way back to this set of trees right here, this double set of trees. There's two ways you can do this. The way I'm doing it, or kind of more stealthy, where you can crawl into that tent over here to the right-hand side. You can go prone in there and then kind of sneak past him. I'm just going to kind of lure him around the tree, and then I'm going to use the tree as actually a, a barricade between me and my exit as I'm escaping. I don't know if this is necessarily the safest way to go about doing this, but he's just going wandering off. So I'm just going to kind of crouch and just make a break for it. He didn't actually go around the tree. Usually he will. So now there's a guy right here. You can avoid him if you are smart. I didn't. So we're going to kick him. And then you have to quickly get your bearings. So when you come out from that previous section, you've got to make a left-hand turn. So if you get caught by him, you're going to have to get your bearings now we're back in the school. Yay. So, 
This isn't too bad, but these school sequences are going to start getting more and more difficult. Yes. So now we're going to follow Jess. We're not alone here. And she went to the left. I'm going straight. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, there we go. All right, so <laughs> here's where I should have gone. Got to interact with this computer here. Now we're going to go back to this hallway. Now I'm going to actually just sprint through here. The fuck? Don't worry about anything that's going on. Travel down this way. Down this hall and jump up into the ceiling. Very easy. Nothing's going to... I don't think anything kills you here on that one. Alright, so we got a lengthy little cutscene here. Uh, this is where you're going to lose a quarter of your battery. There's nothing you can do about it. No use crying over it. I cried enough for the for all of us. So this kind of goes on for for a little bit. So let me go ahead and uh, pop in the chat here. A lot of conversation about pregnancy and babies. And King Wayne mentions the Murkoff device causes fake pregnancy in women. Uh, that is true. It's a very big plot point. There was actually a note in Outlast 1 explaining how it was psychosomatic pregnancies so women would think they were pregnant and not actually be pregnant and that's basically what's happening in this game with Lynn is she's ex spoilers by the way um, obviously if you're here this is a spoilery type video but uh, she thinks she's pregnant and uh, oh, what's your character? Blake. Blake thinks she's pregnant because everyone's hallucinating because the Murkoff Corporation is conducting these experiments with the microwave, uh, the transmitter radio tower sending out microwave signals, which is causing uh, mind control and causing hallucinations. So ultimately, at the very end of the game, there's a baby born, and Lynn says there's nothing there because she was experiencing the psychosomatic pregnancy. And then Noth kind of mentions it, like, he says, I'm powerless against your baby. Well, it's because he's powerless because there was no baby. Anyway, um, that's at least how I piece the story together. Again, I've played through this several times, uh, unfortunately. And we shall inherit this broken earth. See, we prepared everything. And Matthew Hardwick in the chat says the game's too dark, very difficult to see anything. That is correct. It is absolutely dark, which makes this trophy, the trophy's called Messiah, for completing the game on insane difficulty without reloading your battery. Very difficult. You have three quarters of, of, of a battery to work with for this entire game. Uh, and the game itself is dark. And... Maybe your monitor's not turned up, the brightness not turned up all the way. Plus, this is a, a the pre-recorded video is actually a good quality because they're streaming. Uh, reduces the quality, and it's on YouTube. YouTube hates certain colors. It's, it just never looks, nothing looks, nothing ever looks quite as good on, on YouTube. I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty big video file. I've been my entire life in, in colors and, and all of that. And, and, yeah, I, I'm just... It, it bothers me. <laughs> I, I'm definitely a snob when it comes to picture quality. Alright, so they, they took your camcorder. And this bastard is draining off a quarter of the battery. It sucks. Nothing you can do about it. And by the way, this next section, once we finally get off the tree here, is going to suck. This is where we have to go find bandages. And that section, there's two ways to go about it. You can try to sneak your way through there and crawl and, and, and try not to be spotted, or the way I'm going to do it, and that's by causing a big commotion. We'll get there in just a moment. Let's see what else we got here on uh, a lot of story stuff in chat. You guys are actually doing really, uh, really good here in chat. Very, very calm, respectful for the most part. Some spam. We should probably not have that. King Wayne says he's attempted it four times and died at the one hour mark every time. 
Uh, I don't know how far have we gotten into this. No, we're not quite at the one hour mark yet, are we? Anyway, so back, I guess, to the story. Uh, the school stuff. That's all the hallucinations from uh, Blake's experiencing. From because of the hallucinations getting from the radio tower microwaves. And he's remembering the past. And the demon that we see, the monster's father, uh, Loudermilch, the priest, as you ultimately find out. All right, next section here, by the way. Let's go ahead and giddy up. We're foggy, we're hazy, things are blurry. By the way, I turned the brightness up on the uh, on my uh, XSplit here, so you can see a little bit more, but it does create some video artifacts. I do apologize for that. All right, so this section here, stay crouched as you're approaching this campfire area. The bandages are going to be in a tent right behind the campfire. There's a guy sleeping just to the left of the campfire. If you get up, he'll wake up, he'll kill you. So stay down. We're going to get these bandages. Now, from this point... Uh, we're going to hit the, the uh, hold the triangle button to manage ourselves up, and it takes obnoxiously long to do so. And then the, this is where you have the two uh, two ways to do this. You can do it my way, or you can do it where you try to sneak through the tall grass and and then crawl in through the log that's there. The problem if you do that is if you're uh, crawling. And an enemy sees you, you don't have time to get up and run away. So what I'm going to do is just glance to the right, make sure no one sees me. Look to the left. There's going to be a guy coming from straight ahead. Now what I'm going to do is sprint back to where we were hung up. Back in this open area. Train this guy around this. There should be two guys, by the way. If you don't see two guys, you're in trouble. I don't see two guys. Anyways, it's so coming around the camp, go around the right side of the campfire, and then up here, there's a lady sitting on the log. If you go to the left side of that campfire, she'll grab you, you'll die. Or you'll become bleeding. You gotta go around the right side of that campfire. So, again, I trained the enemies as I approached that campfire area. The guy was coming running at me. If I was crawling, he would have killed me. I couldn't have gotten up in time. And you want to make sure you don't take damage there. If you're bleeding, you can actually kill yourself by just jumping down here. So if you come to the back right corner, you can drop without taking any falling damage. But if you're bleeding and take falling damage there, it's over. Next section here, very easy. There's a guy standing in front of the house. He's very slow. Maybe that flashlight's very heavy. You can just easily run around him, down the path, jump up this blood trail here. And now we're going to drop down once more. Now, once you drop down, you got to hide in these tall uh, weeds here, the tall grass. Because Nick and his little baby buddy are coming around the corner. If you get out too far, if you forgot to stop and hide in this grass, you're dead. Again, starting all over because that's what happens on Insane Difficulty. All right, so he's walking away, and he's going to meet up with a bunch of his buddies sitting right outside a gate just ahead and to the left. Now, the best way to do this is wait for him to completely go through the gate, wait about 20 seconds or so. You should hear him say something about getting out of his way. Wait here for a little bit before you climb up this log that's to our right. We got to go up the log and then we're going to drop down in water and we got to hide in the water. If you go too early, too soon, he might actually spot you as you drop down into the water and you don't want that to happen. So we're going to go and just kind of wait it out a little bit. And now we're climbing up the tree. Alright, from there we're going to drop down into the water. Move forward just a, a few feet here and then I'm just going to drop down. You're going to see uh, Nick with the flashlight shining it. You have to be underwater, so you got to hit the uh, circle button to crouch. When you're crouch, when you're in water, you'll be able to uh, hide. Now, this whole process takes about 40 seconds. 
He's going to keep looking around. Don't get up. Don't bother breathing. You're going to have one set of bubbles indicating you're starting to run out of breath. And then in a moment, I'm going to have a second set of bubbles. At that point, we should be clear because shortly after that is where you're going to start drowning. So there's a second set of bubbles, but he's turned and uh, walked away. All right, so now we're going to go into the house and we're going to finally grab our camcorder once again. Now there are some bandages to the left if you need them. There should be. Sometimes the bandage locations are, are a little different. There's usually one there, and there's actually going to be one as we come out of the house. But we have to go through a school sequence first. All right, so for this, pretty simple. We're going to just follow the, the blood trails here on the wall. And I'm going to go down this hallway here. Now, what I'm going to do is turn around heading back uh, out of the hallway and then going, I'm walking backwards now. That is because I'm gonna hear some noise and I'm gonna have to run. And if I figured by turning around before going that hallway, it'd be e easy to get out of there. So got out of that, ran back towards the beginning again, hid behind this locker. And now we're gonna go back down that hallway again. So when you go into that hallway, right where the blue bathroom is, you turn right there. The first time you come here, you have to run away. The monster's coming to get you. Once you've lost it, then you can go back and then answer the phone. And this part's actually Hello. pretty easy now. Hello. As soon as we're done, God, we're gonna hang up the phone and I we're going to sprint call. all the way back to that locker again on the opposite side. I want you to find a place to hide, some place safe where you can remember the taste of her kiss when you felt her neck break, you diseased cocksucker. <laughs> That was a very disturbing tongue. All right, so exit this door, turn left, and then turn left at the end of the hall. It's dark, so you've practiced this a couple times, right? Don't tell me you, you, you got lost there because you need to practice these uh, on nightmare difficulty over and over and over again until you're very comfortable. And now this part sucks. You're going to get out. And here's the way I do it, and it works very well for me. I'm going to open this door. You got the arrow. Quickly grab the bandages, then jump out the window. Now, what I'm going to do is stay along the right side, circle around the right side, and find the house closest to the exit to this area. And I just ran into some barbed wire. I was strung between the trees, so be careful. I know it's dark. In your game, you'll be able to see better, by the way. I'm behind the house, bandaging myself. And then there's this house right by the exit point. I'm going to jump in the side window. Lock door number one, lock door number two. Now I'm gonna stand by the window, making sure no arrow comes at me. Just kind of lean over. All right, Nick is gonna bust in that door. Listen for the busting sound. As soon as you hear it, run out. And that's your clue, uh, cue to go. So around that whole side, I just kind of walk around uh, counterclockwise around that area to get to that house by the exit point. Jump in through the window, lock both doors. As soon as he busts into the door, I jump out the window. He's now in the house, and I'm outside. Be careful, there's a barbed wire uh, trip line there, just to your right. But go around that, and then you can get to this point. Again, I have over at vidme.com slash PS4 trophies. I will have a high-quality version of this uh, recorded video. No commentary. I don't know if it's active yet over there. There is a uh, link in the description. Now this part, he's shooting arrows at you, so I'm sprinting. I'm not wasting any time. If he hits you and you're bleeding, before you climb up here, bandage yourself. Now I'm waiting and I'm sprinting. I'm gonna get up to full speed with my sprint before I get out in the open. Sprinting, he's gonna hit you. You just have to know your path. Grab the bandages, drop down. Nothing you can do here. This dude's going to grab you. So wiggle your right stick back and forth to the left and right as fast as you can. Now don't hesitate. Don't stop and bandage yourself. Keep running because he'll, he'll grab you and kill you. Now, I don't want to stop and heal, but if you feel like you need to stop and heal, make sure you're behind a rock. Now at this point, we're going to fall into the trap. 
Now remember, I'm doing this all in the dark uh, for a lot of newcomers here. We got a, a lot of people in the stream right now. We are doing insane difficulty uh, tutorial here, teaching you guys how to do insane difficulty with using only one battery. Which means we don't reload the battery whatsoever. Uh, we have a little uh, a time here, a little kind of cutscene. So I, I do want to address uh, some things I mentioned up earlier in the stream. Uh, this is about 80% insane difficulty, 20% nightmare difficulty. What happened to me was, and I, again, I can run this entire game front to back, backwards, blindfolded. But what happens is when I put it on insane difficulty, my game crashes. Uh, it crashed twice, once at the hour mark, once at the right before the two hour mark, and once again right after the two hour mark. I rage quit. I almost deleted the game, but my lovely fans were expecting me to make a tutorial teaching them how to beat the game on insane difficulty. So what I did is loaded up chapter select with the part where I my game crashed one of the times continued it from that point it gave me no advantage in doing that i drained the when you do a reload checkpoint you, your battery fills up I, I drained my battery did everything just so i can continue on to teach you guys how to get through this game but three consecutive crashes on insane difficulty made me uh, not really wanting to do this again especially playing through so many times that i couldn't even bear the beginning part of the game because it's just so slow once you've done it all the, uh, a lot. So, as full disclosure, it doesn't change anything. I'm still teaching you how to, to beat this on insane difficulty. I'm just a little ticked off about the game crashing. You go the blue screen on the application closed. Anyway, let's continue onwards. Once you get out of there, it's kind of dark, guys. I apologize. It'll be better on your screen. Uh, you got to navigate to the opposite end of this area. There's three crawling dudes, and you can see them. Again, if your gamma's up all the way, and your brightness and your contrast is up on your monitor, one of them might grab you like they did me. I wasn't able to get around them. They, they won't grab you a second time. They'll they'll start eating you the, the second time. So just run around the creepy crawly dudes. It's actually much easier than you think. All right, so onwards, the final part of the uh, second chapter, which again, in my opinion, is the hardest chapter in the game. The mine section, uh, shout out to that, but we'll get to that once we get to the uh, get to the next, uh, when we get there. But we got to jump through a window. Do not kill yourself here. It would be suck for you to have to start the game over. Make sure your stamina is completely regenerated. Don't be exhausted. Make sure you line up your jump. Alright, so this part kind of sucks, but believe it or not, I successfully did it about 12 times in a row. So I'm going to sprint up the left-hand side behind this building. Behind this little outhouse here to another building here on the left-hand side. There's going to be a little creature behind this house probably going to grab you, but you can run around. It's possible. Keeping on the left-hand side, you can jump up to the path going up from this corner here. At this point, nobody's seen you. You're good. Grab the rope. Sniper Fox, this is live commentary and pre-recorded footage. There's no way I can do this and talk at the same time. This is a trophy guy that will be forever on my channel. Uh, for uh, beating insane difficulty, so we didn't want to screw that up. All right, so we quickly ran over and grabbed this rope. Now, very quickly, don't hesitate. Do not hesitate. Run back this way, around that house, around to the back side of the second house. When you get to the, it's dark, but it's you'll see it in your game. Quickly run this way when he's behind the outhouse there, and then go around this corner of the building. Cut the corner quick though. Don't take too uh, wide of a corner around that last house because uh, there's an ankle biter there for you. So we sat on the behind the one house, looked at the outhouse, waited for Nick to get behind the outhouse, sprinted across, and went around the back of that house. And we cut that corner quick because there's a, a crawler dude there. Cut that corner uh, and then was able to easily uh, escape. 
that final house, if you come around too wide on that back corner, on that last corner, uh, the guy will, will catch you. You can use a quick time event to get rid of him. But by that point, another heretic might be there to kill you. It sucks, unfortunately. <laughs> but, again, you practice that time over and over and over and over again, you'll get it. The secret to beating this on insane difficulty is is repetition, practice, being able to to not think, just do it. Okay, so fairly straightforward this section is going to be. There are a couple uh, opportunities for you to die. Uh, this chapter, if you don't have a really good sound system connected to your TV or a really good set of headphones, it's a little annoying, unfortunately. All right, so once we go inside, and I'll explain why in just a moment, uh, we're going to finally reach this area. We're going to find Father... Louder Milch down here, the demon. So we're gonna go back up the stairs, jump over the railing, drop down, jump with X, drop down the circle. Pretty straightforward. Go down the stairs, going through this back door here. And I'm exhausted, so whew, probably cut that a little close. Again, make sure you, 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 you stop before any kind of encounters, recharge your stamina. I didn't do it there. I probably should have. Okay. So now we're going to drop. And there's a door just in front of us. Once you open that door, go straight and then turn left. And then find the ladder over here. Be careful. You can die there. Now, in here, this is where the cafeteria, we're going to pick up the piece of paper and we're going to be teleported to an area. Well, there's some bandages there. Grab those as well. Uh, where we need to follow the voice of Jessica. Do not, not and I repeat, do not turn on your microphone. That'll drain your battery. Again, we're trying to have, use as little battery as we can before we get to the library. We're trying to get to the mines with half a battery. Jessica, come here. So here, if you have a good set of headphones, crank it up, crank up your TV if you got a good sound system. You can hear her. You can still faintly hear her, Jessica, but you can hear her. Can you hear and then just try to look at there, listen for the left balance, the right balance. Try to get her voice kind of in the center, depending how good your ears are and good your headset is, if you have a good headset. If you don't have a headset... You can completely still do this without using the microphone. The microphone, again, drains battery, so don't do it. You're just going to be running around this area blind for a while. Uh, I did that one time. It took me about, I think, eight minutes before I finally was able to get out of here. A lot of people upset in chat. I have no idea why you're all upset. The footage is pre-recorded. This is a trophy guide. The commentary, however, is live. It's not fun sitting in front of a microphone for two and a half hours explaining things. It's much better when it's uh, there's other people on the other end listening. By the way, my first game crash, I think, is coming up. You won't see it. I've edited the video. Actually, I think... Yeah, I think it would be my first. I don't remember the exact location. All right, so as you can see, it's dark, guys. I'm sorry. It's dark. This is a dark game. I did not make this game. Don't get mad at me. This You're supposed to use the microphone, but we didn't use the microphone. We saved our battery. All right, so now you got to find kind of a path out of here. Just kind of turn. I think I just sat there for a minute thinking there was a cutscene or something was going to happen. But then I'm going to kind of walk forward here. I think I got to look off to the right there. I'm gonna look for the tunnel path. Just look for the light. You'll find it. So now, I'm going to be honest, guys. This is my least favorite chapter. There's actually not a lot of opportunities to die here, which I guess is a good thing. But it's so boring at least your your 12th 
13th, 14th time through here. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of rowing of this rap, uh, rap, raft once we get to it. This chat does need a, a mod. None of my moderators are on. Anyways, continue onwards. Up the stairs. Now, here's... Actually, you're more likely to die from falling in this chapter than you are from anything else. The first opportunity to do so is down here. And believe it or not, I missed this jump twice in a row when I, when I first started uh, playing. So... Line up your shot here. Make sure you look at the ground you're jumping to and not that little piece of wood kind of that angles off. And by the way, when I make my jumps in Outlast games, the way I found that works best for me is looking at the ground. That way I can jump kind of at that last possible second so I don't have to worry about jumping too early or jumping too late. That's just... That's just my advice. Correct. All right, so now we're going to get on that raft. And this is the boring part. And we need a moderator in chat, guys. By the way, so thank you for being here. Make sure you guys subscribe. Uh, I need someone to volunteer who I know. Ron the Bird says he wants to organize the chat. All right, good luck. All right, I got a couple moderators just picked at random. If any of you guys were abusing this. We went, uh, we went toxic here in a real hurly, hurry. Anyways, um, continuing on, the raft is going to get attacked. Just continue onwards. Here's the dead fish, by the way. Use your cam camera battery to... Uh... Uh, if you want to get the collectible, but we're not using the camera at all. Yeah, this, this part is just so uninteresting to me. And it goes... It feels like it goes on forever. Otto, that's a very nice comment. So, hey, be a moderator. <laughs> All right, so get back to the raft. You gotta do a stupid quick time event where you gotta spam the square, the square button, which is not uh, not a good use of my time here. So now begins our long journey. Like something out of a Mark Twain novel. And uh, we're just going to... Uh, we're going to take a look at chat here. And... Uh, my, my good moderators are, are not to be seen. Which is fine. Uh, yes, there's some people. I just want to address this. People are saying... It's, this is fake because I'm not actually streaming the gameplay live. My commentary, of course, is live. This is going to be a trophy guide that's going to live on YouTube for, well, I don't know, until YouTube dies. I mean, which could be six months from now for all we know. Um, so this is a trophy guide. Now, the commentary is live, which is always a fun challenge for me because then I can't uh, 
take back in anything I say or edit out anything or any mistakes. Makes it a little challenging, but I wanted it to present the actual... Oh, here we got to do some quick time events. Keep hitting the square button. It's simple. Uh, so I, I wanted to make sure we had a good, solid, insane difficulty tutorial to teach you guys how to beat this game on insane difficulty. So... Come on. Uh, you don't like that I'm not actually playing the game live. I, I don't know why. The video is still... I actually did it. This last night, as a matter of fact. So I'm just throwing that out there. But guys, be nice. We've got a couple moderators who are doing a nice job at the moment. You guys don't need to be banned or anything, but let's just be nice. And because Good Christians. everyone watching the because archive on YouTube has died. six months from now, I'm not going to care about you guys. You want her to have the I'm just going to continue on with my uh, my guide. They do when there's no baby. Except Marco wants to know which Outlast I prefer, and that would be Whistleblower. Right, next section here, by the way, if you look up high, you got a dude firing arrows at you from above. And he can't kill you. He's just there for show. But if you want to take out your camera and record it, that's another one of the collectibles. I have a guide on my channel, by the way, showing all the collectibles. Um, other trophy guides, hidden messages in the school recordings where you play backwards. I have a, a video of all that as well. It's really kind of cool, nif uh, neat, hidden little stuff you probably didn't ever see or, or even heard of. Yeah, I don't think people understand my job is making trophy guides. So, more continue on. Am I right that this just goes on for far too long? But eventually, we're going to... Jessica's here. Jessica, my dear. I don't know how long you got, but if you want to um, help out my new random mods, I appreciate it. Jessica's one of my favorite people. You guys be nice to Jessica. I do not allow anyone not to be nice to her. So, here we go. Continuing onwards. We're going to eventually crash our raft. And we're gonna get out, and you're gonna you're gonna be happy, and you're gonna think that the that you're done with the raft, and that's not true because we have to get back to it, unfortunately. Oh, Zandolf is here, sweet. All right, so once you get off the raft, we're gonna go under this tree in front of us. We're gonna go climb and do one of those stupid little lead shimmies knock down a tree and you're gonna have another point where you can possibly die and I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this chapter that you're more likely to die from falling than anything else Motherfucking no. so push this tree over and would you believe it I fell off this tree once before too I played this game so many times though that I've probably died in every possible way. Which is why I'm trying to show you guys not necessarily how to approach each section, but how what to look for is, as well. What more importantly, sometimes what's not there is just as important as, as what you're seeing here. So, we're back on the raft. Now, if you thought you were only on here for a quick little jaunt, you'd be uh, you'd be wrong. This is another long, boring trek. Eventually, the raft is going to break apart. You're going to then eventually fall off the raft. And when you fall off the raft, uh, you're going to have to split the gap, essentially. So, you're going to have a guy on the left and the guy on the right. The guy on the right is going to be a little closer to you, but you're going to have to kind of run right up the middle like a running back. You're just going to have to trust in your ability to just keep sprinting once you, once the, the raft breaks because you don't want the guys to catch up to you. That would, that would suck.
So Gray wants to know, and I apologize if I pronounced your name wrong, what's my favorite Outlast character? I'm not entirely sure I have one. It's definitely not any of the people that are trying to eat my face off. I think Miles was was an interesting character. I, I, I don't think Blake is pretty cool. I, I mean, he's hallucinating like everything else. All right, so we lost one log. <laughs> and we keep going. It's like at this point, you're just praying that it's just going to fall apart. Yes, this is the same raft, Jay. Can you believe it? <laughs> By the way, thank you all for being here. Hit the like button. See if we can get that to a thousand before we get to the end of the game. That would be, be kind of cool. Um, hit the subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter, by the way, at PS4 underscore trophies. I honestly also want to... We're going to fall off the raft. Let's split the gap. I'll talk about this in a minute. We're going to... Here's where we're going to fall into the water. You now you can run up the middle. Kind of go a little bit to the left. And the guy's just to your right there. Now keep running. Uh, there's a ladder straight ahead. We're going to get sucked into the pool. This thing is going to come out of the ground. It's going to lick you a little bit. Tickle you maybe in the bum. Now I'm going to use my camera. Turn on the, the thing just to get my orientation. So what you have to do is as soon as you get in the pool, you have the dude right in front of you. You have to turn around and run straight back. So I turn on the night vision. You saw for like half a second. So not enough to, to kill the battery. And then uh, spam the X button. So sprint this way and then spam the X button because you don't know when you're going to get to the edge of the pool. So thank you for the super chat there, uh, Captain Kidbox. Appreciate it. He says check out his channel. So everyone do that. I do. I will give you a shout out if you're going to send a super chat. All right, so go to the women's bathroom. I apologize for that little break there. Go into that stall and then follow her, Jessica, around. And then um, up these stairs. Again, make sure you're doing the... Just kind of, when you're not exhausted, make sure you, you refresh your stamina when you know there's going to be an enemy encounter. Like right here, to the left. So we're going to have to run to the right. And then once we get to the door, we're going to have to turn back around and run the other way. Very simple. Ah, what the fuck? So there he goes. Alright, so we're, we're pretty much clear now. So in this hallway, Fuck. this is where you get the slip and slide trophy. Uh, sprint and hit the crouch button, circle on PlayStation, and you will do a slide just like that. Slide for 12 meters will get you the slip and slide trophy. So now we're going to go start a new chapter. This is uh, Rain Blood, Blood Rain something, I forget what it's called. And yes, Marco, there will be DLC. This is where my game crashed on my first insane run. My game crashed, uh, give or take, around this area three times in a row. Which is why you're going to see me tack on a nightmare difficulty in a minute. It's not going to literally change anything. Every single insane video on YouTube right now starts insane, ends in nightmare. Every single one. I don't know if you guys know that. At least at the time of this recording. So right up here. And actually, this is right where the freeze happened. You might have saw that little kind of glitch. So can open that door. Continue onwards. I gained absolutely zero battery life, by the way, in the uh, in that little uh, refresh there. Just want a full disclosure for you guys, because everyone else is kind of lying to you. Uh, there are bandages there, so I picked them up. Now we need to kind of work our way up here in the dark. Again, this is where you gotta just replay. You gotta practice. Practice each section over and over. I practice each section about a dozen times just so I can get damn good at this. And honestly, I've gotten damn good at this. Except there's gonna be a part up here where <laughs> it doesn't look like it.
but it is completely dark. I am just trying to get to the other side of this room. Do not use your battery. I've used it for about a total of a, a quarter of a second amongst my entire playthrough. I will use it again in a couple minutes. And shout out to Zandolf, Jessica, and the other new mods who really cleaned up the chat. Thank you. I don't want the experience to be terrible for you guys. I'm all about a community. I'm all about being nice. We're a bunch of trophy hunters, most of us. But once you start getting the larger streams, you start getting non-trophy hunters alike, and things kind of start going downhill. All right, guys. We're back in the school. So thank you, guys. You guys are doing a great job. But here, we got to interact with computer terminal number one. The school segment sequences, I think, after this, get hard. Flat out hard. Going to require some time, practice. Uh, there's a jump scare there. I totally did everything I could to, to edit, well, not edit it, but just to avoid showing it to you guys. Once this is done, we're just going to exit the computer lab out the back door. It's just to our right. Actually, you know, here's a funny thing. This is where I got the trophy for crawling for 500 meters. Exit the computer lab, turn right, turn left. Then we're going to turn left again. I think I crawled up and down this hall right here. About, I don't know, for about 10 minutes straight crawling uh, to get the trophy. <laughs> The school chapters are a good place to get your crawling trophy. Uh, there's a trophy for crawling 10, uh, 500 meters and another one for spending 10 minutes underwater. All right, down here. Get ready. Make sure your stamina is recharged. You're going to hear uh, the, the demon thing coming after you, so run away from the monster. As soon as you hear it, just run back up the stairs, go out the door, and then you're going to just circle around this area counterclockwise. And now, we're back here. Now, this is where the chapter gets hard. This is, the chapter overall is not as hard as, as chapter two, I don't think, in my opinion. But you have, to, you have to know exactly where you're going from this point forward. From now until the end of the game, it's very critical. So in this building, you're going to crawl under that thing. A little monster is going to be out over there. So what I'm going to do is hide behind this door. He's going to eventually push on the door. He's eventually going to knock it over. When he knocks it over, he's going to go about five feet into the room. Once he goes into the room, I'm going to sprint around him, behind him, up the stairs. So, uh, it's up a little bit to the right, up and up again. And then we're going to be on the second floor. On that second floor, there's a gap in the center of the room on the right-hand side that you need to squeeze through. I'm going to use my battery against my better judgment. And I'm not going to find it right away. This is where I, I look like I don't know what I'm doing. But I'm up on the second floor. You have only a, a split second here. You don't have very long to find that little gap. I apologize, guys. That was not as clean as it should have been. The, rest of the, the whole rest of the run is completely clean and, and beautiful. That was not. All right, so now up here on the second floor, we're good to go. Go up some more stairs here. Actually, I think is right here is where I experienced another crash. Right there on that stairs. On a whole separate speed run, an insane speed run. Uh, three times on my speed run attempts, it crashed. Three consecutive runs, and that's when I said, F this, I'm never playing this game again. Then you guys convinced me to make this guy. <laughs> so that's why I tacked on a nightmare thing just so I can do a chapter select because I could not play through the beginning of the game again. I couldn't do it. I know I can do it. But I, I don't want to risk spending another two hours to another crash. Okay, guys. You ready? I'm ready. Get into school. Go out the store. Turn left. And this is where you got the bodies. 
You can take out your camcorder and record that if you want. Just don't turn on your microphone or your night vision. This is where we're gonna start using our battery, and we're gonna use it quite a bit here in just a moment. Again, you have about three quarters of your battery, because Nick stole the quarter earlier. One of the monsters takes a quarter of it out. So we're gonna use about a quarter of it to get through the library section. But first, we need to go up and down this hallway a couple times. Come back down here, go back this way. Here's the library, guys. You will have had to play this a few times to understand what's going on, where you're going. But you're gonna see the the, the demon dude right there, the monster. Go through this maze. I'm flicking the count, and I hit a dead end, of course. I'm flicking the camera on and off as much as I can, and I'm not entirely finding. <laughs> this is not the cleanest uh, of runs either, apparently. So we're trying to find, kind of go back and then to the left. And I've done this enough times to kind of know where where I'm going, even though it wasn't clean. But here's where the second half of it begins. At this point, once you reach the demon for that second time, you're just going to go around one bookshelf. And you can have them train around you to get back here again. So I ran backwards a little bit. I waited for him at, at a bookcase, and then I ran around that bookcase and, and got behind him. That's what we did there. Again, trial and error, guys. You're going to have to just practice that section uh, a few times to get, get it down. Now come in this room, grab the bandages if you need them. We're going to go down this hall and use the camcorder battery in just a second because we're about to be chased yet again. I'm going to kind of turn my body here because I know it's coming. I'm listening for it. Shit. Follow Jessica. Flash it here. And run behind that bookcase there. Very critical you flash it there because you can get stuck on a pile of books or you can get stuck on the table. Make sure you flash the battery. And we're good on the battery usage until we get to the mines. That's it. And Venom Gaming just sent another super or a super chat. Thank you for that. I do appreciate that. I wish I could send more love your way, but we need to uh, we need to get through this. We need to get you guys through this insane difficulty here. So you push that cart, jump over, and then we're gonna uh, drop down here. I get a little tied up. I don't immediately know what I'm doing wrong, where I'm going. But if I just gone back up to the top, what you do is you go down the stairs, get to the end, you gotta crouch. And it, see, I'm still trying to figure it out. You go down the stairs, get to the end, you gotta crouch and turn to the right. So crouch, turn to the right, and then you can go under. Again, nothing's chasing you here, so don't use your don't use your, your light, guys. Just strong arm it. Just figure it out. You no no there's no time limit here. You can just do this as much as you can. Beard Gamer sent a super chat, making us all look bad. Ha ha. Help him get 10 subs. Let's give Beard Games 942 10 subs if you guys can. But anyway, that wasn't very good. I don't know why I got confused and lost there, but eventually you get out here. Uh, you'll have to come around, squeeze through the thing, go underneath, and then pull up in this gate. You'll hear voices. Nothing's going to kill you guys. So I can't reiterate. And Venom Gaming says, hey, hope you finish it. Thank you for that. Uh, move this cart back up. You're going to hear a bunch of things. I'm, I'm telling you guys, though, take your time. It's not as, much, uh, not as bad as you think. However, here's where it gets bad. You're going to jump across, and you got a massive chase scene here. You've got to know the route. So we're going to follow the stairs up. We're going to drop down. Again, don't use your battery. Drop down, crouch right away up the stairs. Now we're going to have to balance ourselves across two platforms, two beams. And don't panic. Don't let your heart get the best of you here. But you got to be quick. <laughs> I, hate to, I hate to say, just I don't want to say take your time. But take your time. But really don't take it. It's, you can do it. I promise you, if you practice it a few times, you'll get it. All right, here's a real, real, real hard part. As soon as you drop down on the Jessica's dead body, you got to turn around. You have no room for error on this part, guys. None at all. We have to sprint to the bathroom. 
you have to make a right turn out of there and left turn down this hallway go through this double door turn left and then right into the bathroom and then we're gonna go to the back stall you cannot be a second late here once you're in you're spam the square button as you're approaching that spam the button as you come into the stall I'm telling you guys if you're a split second later than what I just was you're dead it took me four consecutive uh, attempts when I was practicing on nightmare difficulty to finally figure it out so as soon as you land on Jessica's dead body you gotta sprint all the way to the bathroom as you're getting that last stall you gotta spam the square button as you're in getting in the stall spam the square button to close it make sure you're in the stall before you close the door now at this part I just kind of made my way I crawled here I kind of stopped at the the end for a, a moment there and then I kind of crawled here at this point I'm gonna take out my camera because I'm gonna use my night vision in a moment as soon as the song stops the lights will kick on open the door straight in front of me is the door so I got to the stall right opposite of the door I stood up I'm standing I'm not crawling or anything as soon as the music stops both out of that door, spam the square button as you're approaching this door. End of this hall, we're gonna turn right and then we're gonna have to make a left and go up some stairs. Very, very important that you spam these buttons because you have no margin of error, you gotta be quick. Second door, spam it again. As I'm entering this, flicking my camera, night vision, you can get caught in that garbage can right there and it sucks if you do. Spam the square button, turn right. You don't have to hide. Sprint all the way. This whole thing's sprinting. Spam the square button into this room. Pick up this piece of paper. and That, honestly, is probably one of the hardest parts in the entire game. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys. And here's where I crashed early, another time, by the way. You're going to the, have to practice that over and over and over again, guys. You literally have no room for error there You've got to be so quick through that part it's it's wow okay so i'm sweating describing that guys i'm telling you my heart's racing right now I, I, that I just because i didn't remember how i felt when doing that all right so push this thing and we're gonna drop down we're gonna have another chase when you drop down this is actually you have to be very mindful here you have to turn around turn around I flick my night vision on there for a second I don't know why I have half a battery left by the way now climbing up this little ramp here the game's actually automatically gonna put you in the crawling uh, mode but you do have to manually jump here again the game's gonna automatically force you to crawl here and up these stairs. So it's really important when you drop down, you have to turn around. And we're finally making it up, guys. We're finally getting there. I have half a battery left. Turns out, by the way, once I get to the end, I have maybe four extra bars. I, was, I, I probably could have used it more. All right, so here's an elevator. If you need bandages, grab them first. Interact with the handle. As soon as you interact with the handle, start walking back the other way. Uh, walk towards that door, but not in front of it because a cart's gonna smash it open. Again, make sure my stamina is recharged as that's crashing through. I now make a run for it. Guys, you have no room for error here either. You have to sprint. You have to sprint the entire time. You have to make that jump. You have to make this slide. You have to make this jump over here. We're gonna swing around, go up some stairs. Now you're gonna start running out of stamina at some point and you're gonna start staggering a little bit. You have to keep going, keep sprinting guys. Hit that button, hit the R3 button. Make sure you're sprinting, slide under. Got some stairs here, jump. Go down here. Our screen's starting to shake a little bit. We're running, we're getting exhausted, but you gotta keep sprinting. Make sure you're sprinting when you hit the ground there. Go around left, right of that guy, left of that guy. So swing right, left, and then left here. And you'll automatically close the door. So that's... It all happens so quick. Back to back to back. You have no room for error on Nightmare and Insane Difficulty. Same thing. You just ha you have... You have no room for uh, error. Ven uh, Venom Gaming sent another super chat. Thank yes. you for that. I do appreciate it. Let's breathe, guys, because we're heading to the mines. This whole game, I've been telling you that you need to save your 
hammer battery. You need to conserve the battery. You need to walk through the dark. A lot of the sequences in the dark, there's no one chasing you for 90% of it at least. So you have time just to, to force your way to wherever you're trying to go. And that's all gonna pay off or are gonna reap the rewards of that here in this chapter. By the way, thank you. There's a bunch of people here. We're almost at a thousand likes on the on the stream. Thank you guys so much for that. I honestly, I love you all. This is what I do. I love making guys. I love telling people how to how to do difficult stuff, even though I might not be the best person to do it. Not many people will do it. All right, so we're at the bottom. Uh, if this is your first time here, you'll remember this is where you get one of the story-related trophies. So following the path, again, it's going to be a little dark, but we're just going to deal with it. Uh, you're going to see kind of a little jump scare. The dude kind of run from the right to the left. At this point, I'm in the dark trying to figure out where the hell I am. There is a little jump scare, so we're going to turn right, try to find the light. I just saw it a second ago. There it is. Now we're going to kind of swim underneath this thing. There's a lot of things in this chapter that can kill you. Uh, you have another section with Val where you're crawling under. You have to crawl pretty much this entire uh, length of a path, and that part is hard. Uh, not so hard, but you have to know exactly where you're going. And you need battery for that. There's a few sequences we're going to need the battery, which is why we have half a battery, which is awesome. You want to make sure you have about two or three bars at the very end as well. Just keep that in mind. All right, so we got the cave in. Backwards a little bit. Go down the left path here. Fuck. And we have another crawly section here. Uh, this is actually a very short crawl, but you're going to be in the dark the whole time. Uh, it's a very short crawl, but you're like, what, what's going on? Why can't I move? Well, what you got to do is crawl in. You're about maybe 10 feet. You got to crawl. And then what you need to do is kind of stand up and then find a ledge that you can jump. So I'm just kind of blindly jumping. And I found it. There we go. Again, save your battery, guys. Nothing's going to kill you. You can take all day looking for that. All right. So here is where you're going to uh, meet two heretics that are going to try to kill you. So what we're going to do is open and unlock this door. Leave and squeeze through this first opening right here. One of the uh, bad guys is gonna now go wander off and we're done with him. We don't have to deal with him anymore now, but there's a second one and this one, this guy, th this guy kind of sucks, unfortunately. So what we're gonna do is squeeze through the second half of this and we're gonna find a second door leading back to that main path. That main path is really long, but we're gonna find a second door. So out the first door, squeeze through, get to the where the, the, the flame is, and then squeeze through again, work your way to the second door. Now we're going to go find Mr. Scaredy Pants here. Well, I'm Mr. Scaredy Pants. But he's just ahead. And I know he's in this area. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get my bearings, just walk backwards until I hear the screams. That way I know which way I'm going already. Now I'm looking for that little crease in the wall where I squeezed through you'll see the light look for the light that light is very important squeeze through but don't go anywhere just squeeze through and stay there don't go in any further you need to get this guy to grab you he's gonna pull you out from the wall and then you have a split second to run away from him and he didn't come so I have to go find him oh he's still there so I'm gonna make him chase me back to that the hole in the wall here Looking at the, looking for the light. Staying right here at the beginning. He's going to grab me, pull me out, immediately turn to the right and run. That's how you get past all that without getting hit. So th that part took me a little while to figure out. So again, he can't, when he grabs you from that little wall, from that little crevice, he won't kill you. He has to pull you out before he can kill you. So when he pulls you out, that's when you have your moment to go and actually he'll hit you. he won't die uh, you can't die first hit he has to hit you twice by the way so if you start bleeding just run down here and then use bandages if you have to
All right, so we're jumping down here. I apologize, guys. I see the chat. There's a lot to discuss here, a lot I have to kind of go over. I wish I could sit here and talk. Uh, but we have a another little thing, dark area we need to go into. And I don't remember. I wish I... I think I'm crawling. And we have 1,083 likes on this video. Proof that I'm actually speaking live. So we're crawling through. This is the dark area. I got a little tangled up here. Again, don't use the flashlight battery. Nothing's going to kill you. Take your time. Okay. Whew. This is a very long set of stairs. Unnecessarily long, by the way. It's going to lead you to a little kind of scary thing. And got that nursery rhyme that scares the hell out of me. Probably had a nightmare about that once or twice. I don't know about y'all. But eventually we're going to get to this door here. That was all the stairs, by the way. That's the same. That's a long staircase. I think we go here, and I think we got to kind of look left. Now you're going to get some tangled up with some stalactites. So we're going to have to kind of like crouch. You don't have to crawl, but you're going to have to crouch at a certain point to continue on. There you go. All right, so now... This is this is another one of those tricky scenarios. We have a little kind of cutscene here, which is which is good because it gives me time to, to set this up. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat is killing me. Oh, and I let my coffee get cold. It's terrible. All right, so as soon as this is over, you're gonna see boulders fall on Val here and the other things. As soon as that is over, you've got to immediately sprint. Don't hesitate. You have to be ready. Just don't get world. relaxed. Sit back and all right, cut scene good. I can relax. No. Second, you have the ability to sprint. You have to sprint. Uh, we're going to then have to turn right. And then it's going to be dark path. You have to flick your camera light on. Welcome on and off. Because we're going to save battery. So we're just going to flick it on and off. And quick. To find a path that goes to the left. Once it goes to the left, I think we have to get to the end and turn right again from my memory. And then we're going to kind of have a little squeeze-through area and the, the have a cave in. That's when you're, you're safe. So that's what's going to happen. Let's go ahead and show it to you here in just a second. Here's the cave in. Get ready. you got to sprint, guys. You wait half a second on the sprint. She'll catch up to you, I promise you. Sprint. So, oh my god, sprint. I'm going to do a... I don't know if I jump there or not. Turn right. Now it's dark. Flash your... Hit your uh, R3 button. Look for the little path to the left. Keep sprinting. Make sure you're sprinting. Turn right. And stay kind of along the left side there. And you're... That's it, guys. That part can be hard. She got me in my practice um, two consecutive times. Even after I knew exactly what to do and where to go. I don't know if I hesitated for a split second. I don't know what I did. <coughs> but remember, when you're practicing sections, uh, get to the before you hit a checkpoint. When you practice it on nightmare difficulty, before you get to a checkpoint, allow yourself to get killed, and then you can just keep doing it over and over. But I successfully completed each chapter a dozen times each to even be able to kind of have this kind of memorization of the. Um, of what's going on now. Well, speaking of what's going on, I'm in a dark area. I don't know what the hell's going on here. Well, I'm looking for the the water area where the uh, where you got to hit the switches, and I got a little turned around there. But again, I'm not gonna panic. I got all the time in the world. Uh, so what I'm gonna do? That's where you, the, you need to get through. So what I'm doing is heading back here. There's a little area you can go underwater and swim underneath a uh, a wall, and then look left. You got Val uh, sitting here. She's gonna have a uh, I think it's Val. A, a light. Just wait here. I just popped up for some air. Probably wasn't very smart. Alright, so as soon as she paths to the left, hit the switch that's going to be now right behind you. Now we have to go into the next cave system. I'm avoiding this light. Don't hit that light with your head. Stay left. Into the next area. I'm going to flash my camera here in a second. I have to get behind this partition and hit the second switch. You see my battery life at the top right. I'm doing real good on that, by the way. All right, so now that I've hit it, I'm be heading back to where it shut off the electrical. I'll be able to get to that first room where the first switch was, right through this doorway. 
before she comes back at me. At this point, I'm just going to hide underwater, let her go back down that hallway, and we're done. For now. <laughs> It's a very scary part coming up. The scary as far as failure part coming up. So I hit my uh, night vision on just to get a bearings on the exit cave. All right. Don't miss this jump, guys. Do not, do not miss that jump. You have more time than you think. If you have to stop for a second, you have to pause the game even. Do not miss that jump. You'll thank me later for telling you to stop and breathe. Actually, that might be the one jump in this game I didn't miss. I missed all the other ones at least once. Alright, so you guys know what to do here. Push the cart. It swings around. Okay, let me uh, go to the chat. Random uh, Banana says, isn't Val a dude? Val is a dude. But this whole... She turns in this female version of herself, but that's probably all the hallucinations that Blake is experiencing with the experiments from the Murkoff Corporation. Anyways, we're going to pull up this thing. Now, there's going to be a section with uh, Val where we're, we have to do crawling through a dark tunnel system. And you have to do it, for the most part, um, in, the blind, in, the, in the dark. So that's where we're going to use up all but maybe a few bars of camera. I don't care about any camera up after that. So we're going to go down here. So this is really where saving that battery is really going to come in play because it's all crawling. There's things that you can get caught on. Things that will stop you. Of course we have to get there. Uh, right here, I, I down at that ladder and you can't, you can't see, you'll see it better in your game. Uh, there's a little half wall there. If you kind of walk God around, follow it, and then you duck down, like I do. and you come out. So there's a little you have to duck under. All right, here's here's the hard part, guys. You got to get to this little crawling space. You got to flick your camera. Use all but a little bit of your battery if you have to, but just keep flicking it on and off. You can get caught on so many different things here, guys. If you get stopped for more than two seconds, it's over. You've come a long way, so don't don't let this be the end of you. This is why you saved your battery right here. Don't use it if you have it. Try to save yourself a couple bars at the bottom. All right, you get to this area. You got this little center thing here. I'm just gonna now. I'm crouching and not crawling around. Make sure you didn't, don't get caught. Now we're gonna have to cr uh, crawl again, again on and off with the light. Turn right. She's right behind me. Turn right again. Got some. Uh, Walking. I don't know if you can actually fall off that. If you can, it's very generous. Now you're falling in the water. This part sucks too. Oh my god. You gotta get to the light. You gotta orientate yourself. Flick your light on and off again. On and off. Look for these little things sticking out of the water. If you're fast enough. Now there's two other heretics falling in the water with you. So two. Be mindful of that. But if you're fast enough from when you fall and you go fall into this little area and you don't get caught on any of those little things sticking out of the water, you'll split them, you'll, they'll be behind you, and you always want them behind you. So up the path, slide down here, and we're gonna go up the ladder. At this point, guys, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling actually very, very good that we're going to, uh, there's one more real difficult section, and that's after the whole little they spray that little pixie dust stuff in your face, and then you go back to the school briefly. There's the chase out of there. If you can have two bars of, of, of life on your battery, you're good. All right, so by the way, once we, we climbed up that ladder, uh, there is a thing we have to crouch and go under in order to get to the scaffolding section. I think it took me a minute to orientate myself there. It shouldn't have taken that long. But I eventually found the ladder. There's a second ladder. Again, if you have your uh, uh, your gamma setting at 100%, if you turn your contrast and brightness on your computer monitor as high as it'll go, you will actually see much better. This is a live stream, so you're not going to see. YouTube hates. is isn't going to give you the, the quality. So... Even though it looks completely dark there, in my game, when I'm playing it, that wasn't the case. All 
All right, so here we go. Here's actually the final note if you want to pick that up in the game. But we're going to go up here. Here's where we get our little spray in the face. Andy William wants me to say shoe on head to prove this commentary isn't pre-recorded. All right, there you go, buddy. All right, so moving on. Uh, it, this is just a little thing. I uh, gotta deal with it. This is where the little tree-looking people are, are having sex with each other. It's very strange. All part of the hallucinations with the Murkoff uh, company, with the radio towers are sending out those signals. You're affected. Lynn's affected. Lynn thinks she she's got that psychosomatic pregnancy thing going on. All of the people, the residents in the villages, all the, the, the priest people, everyone's affected by this. By this. This is why things are all strange here. Alright, so. <clears throat> we're gonna go back to school here in just a second. Now, I wanna take a second. This is where the. Uh, um, the game takes a weird, a dark turn. I won't say weird. I, I like it. I, I I'm if you study the the, the collectibles and the story and really kind of uh, dig deep into it, it's a really fascinating story. And it's really this. I, I, I guess we'll call it an interactive cutscene that kind of really starts to tie a lot together. And a lot of the collectibles, by the way, from Outlast One apply to the story of this game. So you really have to have a huge understanding of the universe. But I do want to just mention that I don't have this the Messiah trophy for completing the speed run I know I mentioned this a couple times uh, people are gonna skip ahead there's a lot of new people here because on three consecutive insane difficulty speed runs my game crashed I got the blue screen and it quit to the ps4 uh, dashboard when you're playing a game that has no saves or checkpoints a game crashing is a death. And I was frustrated. I did it again. It crashed. I did it again. And I gave up. I almost deleted the game, but a lot of people on Twitter, by the way, at PS4 underscore trophies, follow me over there. It would greatly help me. Um, I gave up. I wanted to delete the game. And then I realized the other insane difficulty walkthroughs on YouTube... They did the same thing. They started on insane and then changed it to to nightmare difficulty. So there is actually no true 100% start to finish. Unfortunately for me, it was because my game crashed three consecutive times. I'm not doing it again. So I decided to just go chapter select to where I my furthest point was, and then did a uh, started from there with the same battery life I had before. So I apologize, I it's not from start to yet? finish. I didn't get no. the trophy, but the game then. crashed three you times and come over? Yeah. I, I I was frust I was very why? frustrated. Why what? Like why do you want to come over? Very I don't know. Very much so. <coughs> Excuse me. So yes, um I will have on Vidme. Oh vid.me slash ps4 trophies another site i'm starting to upload videos to uh this entire video without the commentary with uh higher it's higher quality higher resolution i don't know when it'll be ready in the description is the link uh, if you guys have a vidme account uh follow me over there you can follow it's like twitter you follow uh, there's a subscribe option, which is a dollar, but that's just if you want to be nice. You could just follow. It's like subscribing. It's confusing. Vidme is more like a Reddit type thing. And by the way, thank you for that uh, uh, super chat, X Captain Kid Xbox. Nobody's in trouble. Uh, it says check out his channel, so we'll do that. Jessica. Jessica so yeah, up, I'm starting to upload some content to Vidme, but nothing that's not going to be on YouTube. Right. Don't worry, there's nothing going to be exclusive there. Why don't you go along home, Blake? Don't go. So yeah, this video, uh, minus the commentary, will be on Vidme at some point. I have no idea how long it takes for them to process videos. 
let you. All right, see what we got in chat. I know this is a lengthy cutscene here. It's almost over. Go home and pray. Say, I want you to say. Hakim Duran wants to hear the dialogue. Is there no? Nothing's the matter, but I need game audio. It'd be strange to get two hours into this and not realize that. Walk away. Winston says, uh, thank you for the Horizon Guide. Love your channel. And he subbed. Thank you for subbing. I do appreciate everyone who's uh, subscribed to the channel. I didn't fake the trophies to pop, by the way. I just cut the video at the end. All right, so we know what's going on here, guys. We're going to get here, turn around, scream in. We're going to run back. Massive spoilers. I mean, if you're watching this, then... I don't think you're concerned about that too much. All right. Sad, but true. This is what happened to Jessica. <laughs> Things start to make sense, especially once you realize that little that monster creature that's been chasing us in the school is Father uh, Loudermilch. I don't know if you guys had noticed, probably not. There's a scar on top of the heads in the same spot. All right, here, use the rest of your battery, turn around. Uh, you gotta kind of like shimmy around this little pole right here. Don't get caught on that. There's some light here, but there's a lot of darkness. I had like five bars of battery. I still have three at the moment. So I'm really good on this. This part's really easy if you have light. But if you don't have light, it, it can suck. It can really suck to get this far. This is this is almost the last thing I can kill you guys. There's only one more thing that can really kill you. I'm exhausted. You see my uh, wavering there, which is again, something you don't ever really want to do. I think really at this point, I'm already safe. But I'm not taking any chances here. Fuck. Open the door. Lynn. And what do we have here? We have a pregnant Lynn. She's not pregnant, guys. Psychosomatic pregnancy. They talk about it in the first game. Uh, the researcher that mentioned it in the note in the first game uh, is here in the second game. And these are all psychosomatic pregnancies. Uh, because of the hallucinations we and the testing they're doing with the microwave towers. <clears throat> Thought I'd just throw that out there for anyone who was uh, confused by that. Seems to be a lot of confusion about the, the story. So, yes, I have now officially done with the camera. I did not reload the batteries at all. Not once. Yeah. I'm really happy about that. It's actually not as hard as, as you think it would be. You just have to keep practicing all those sections over and over, guys. Practice. Uh, use my guide here to, to guide you through specific encounters and find a good way to do things, but you, it's all going to come down to you just learning it and practicing it. Oh, Jessica, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. She's worried about spoilers. She's a moderator, so I should be considered fuck, fuck. of her needs. But, all right, guys, here's okay? our last encounter we I'm have in down. the game. I'm sorry. You're going to pick her up. You're going to take her to the bed. Um, Marta is going to appear. You're going to pick up Lynn and walk. So when you place her down on the bed, we're going to pick her up and turn to the right. Walk forward a little bit. There's a door to the left. Don't go through that. Go through the second Just, opening. So basically okay. turn right. Walk straight to the end. Turn left. And we're going to make a left and then a right. You'll see in a second. But you're going to see Marta. Don't go too quickly. Let her. Make sure she's following you. Before you come all the way to the end, turn left. There's going to be a cave-in right in front of us. Turn left. At the end of this, we're going to turn right. You'll see some stairs going up. Now we're almost there, guys. Go from this room to the second room back here through this door to the left. Straight ahead of you, turn left. Turn 
then left again, and then just weave your way into this room. Nothing can kill you from this point forward. I don't think. Oh god, that would be terrible if I, I, if I was wrong about that. I imagine someone in the comments six months from now is, is going to say, well, Brian, I, I killed myself because of fire or something. And there's fire, so I, yeah, I guess it's possible you can die. Then nothing should kill yourself. Okay. Fuck you! Fuck your god! So, it's time to pick up the pieces. The pieces being uh, Lynn. And thank you guys for getting it almost 1,300 likes in this stream. I do appreciate that. It, you have no idea how much I love you guys. Especially if you're a trophy hunter, but I love everybody. Hurry. We'll find I will feel oh pretty good tomorrow is my birthday, so I'm going to relax, have some beers, and be thankful for all of you guys. So there's the fire I was talking about, the lightning's going to strike. Just go around it. I think at this point, you really don't need me to explain anything more. So I don't know what we're, how we're doing on time. Oh, shit. Blake. I thought this was longer than it was, yeah, but maybe I was wrong. Soon. So... I guess there, nothing left to tell you other than hit the like shelter. button, make sure you guys subscribe, and let's talk kind of about the the ending. Jessica, if you want to go away, that was a probably a good time. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We're going to lay down Jessica. I mentioned the, the, the fake pregnancies, and oh gosh, I didn't think there was going to be so many birthday wishes. Thank you. I just threw that out casually. I don't even celebrate it, by the way. I'm old, 41, will be 41. Uh, I'm gonna spend the day with my girlfriend. It'll be nice. So, we're gonna lay down Jessica here and once we get into the uh, chapel. She's going to give, this is an ugly bird. And there's a JJ if you look close enough afterwards. I won't though. I don't want YouTube to suddenly take, YouTube, this just, YouTube already sucks with the, uh, with the advertising, it's, and I mentioned oh, earlier, shit. man, it shit, is killing shit, all content shit. creators. You need to lie down. But, um, oh, I can't do this. she's can. going, oh, can't do this. <laughs> I think oh, I just God. said the wrong name. So Lynn is going to fake give birth I'm to trying. a baby. You're going to see just a baby. That's baby. all part of the experiments. That's all part of the, 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 the signal, ah. the microwaves that are being sent out, the flashes that you yes. saw. It causes hallucinations. I know, baby, I know. It causes psychosomatic pregnancies in women. None of this is real. Oh, and Noth, who we're going to see in a minute, the, the, the father, the priest, the other priest dude, oh, is going to say, I'm powerless against your baby. There is no baby. And here's kind of the proof. There's nothing there. God, that line, that line, just speaks volumes. Lynn! Lynn! No, Lynn! Lynn! Anyways, you guys can tell me your thoughts on the ending uh, in the comments if you're not watching live. I would appreciate that. In fact, if you made it this far. I really want to know that in, in the comments. I mean, if you're live, obviously you're here, but if you're watching this on the archived, which I imagine tens of thousands more people will watch it there. Uh, my opinion is there's no baby. There's nothing there. Everything has been been a hallucination for the most part in fact there are some people that argue that lynn's been dead this whole entire time early on you kind of see her and she kind of runs a little bit and then she kind of bends down and she's got all this pain and and from that point forward the only time you see her is when you're carrying her to or from somewhere and you saw her body was all strung up down below where the 
where the uh, wood people were, okay. or, else? or the uh, Groot. Else what? I think people, someone <laughs> called it as Groot. Uh, strung up. So there, I mean, there's so many uh, I got you again. theories, I guess. But this is how you beat insane difficulty. If it wasn't for my crash, again, a crash will literally kill you. Kill you. It's as good as a death. We would pop the trophy right here. I could probably go back and do it. Maybe I'll just do it as a stream one day, casual kind of little thing. I have this game memorized front to back. Every little move that I need to make, every little step. There's just a couple dark areas that I might get a little lost in. But in order to save the camcorder battery again, make sure you don't use it. You don't have to. Uh, make sure you try to only Ooh, use less yeah. than two seconds worth of battery until you get to the library. So two, two, three seconds Ooh, yeah. total up until Left the library point. It. Maybe a little I bit more. Maybe you can use about five it. seconds of battery. Of uh, once you get to the library, one. you want to try to get through that There's maze no with that. half your battery remember uh, remaining. Still, now remember God, Nick in the symbiote, his little fire breathing or fire arrow baby friend on top of them they take a quarter of your battery from you at a certain point in the game so when you get to the library try to get through all that with just with half or maybe a little less than half and you'd be okay uh, then use it in the mind when you have to don't be stingy um, particularly when you have that sequence after Val when the cave in and you have to run her and you have to make a left turn in the dark while being chased. Very critical there. Uh, then later on when you're crawling away from her and you're doing a crawling and your left turns and right turns, that's all in the dark. Uh, save a couple uh, bars of battery after that. And that's, that's really it. We are going to reach the end. I am going to cut the stream here in just a moment. But I do want to thank everyone again. Thank you for watching. If you're watching this archived on YouTube, thank you for making it this far. Much love to you guys. I appreciate it. Uh, we 2,800 people live at one point. That's amazing. Thank you. I am going to... Uh, I am so grateful for all of you. I hope you guys get your trophies. I hope your game doesn't crash on you. That would totally, that would, trust me, I know it sucks. Uh, I'm going to get in contact with Red Barrel, see if they have anything. I have actual raw footage of it happening, so maybe I can send that to them. Maybe they can analyze, analyze it. And that's not the sun exploding. At least I don't think so. Hey, Blake. <clears throat> Again, <laughs> could be the hallucinations. It could be the Murkoff Corporation hey, just <laughs> destroying evidence of something. The world didn't end. I imagine the DLC, however, will hopefully explain a little more. Don't worry. Hopefully. But there are some good videos explaining the storyline on Outlast 2 if you guys want to go check it out. I do have a video of all of the school recordings that you get where the the tapes are blank. All it is playing is the, the feedback, the noise, the white noise. Uh, if you listen carefully, there's a voice. If you extract it and play it backwards on your computer, you can actually hear a message and I have videos for that as well. Hit the I button on the top right corner. It should be a playlist for you. That's it, guys. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Love you. See you soon.